Hey everybody, we're gonna go over in this video how I would look at a golf swing using video. So hopefully this helps you if you're using any type of swing app on your phone, computer, this will help you with what to look for so you can better analyze your golf swing. Scott Oden coming at you here. Hopefully everybody, you are out there being safe and healthy. I know it's a tough time in this quarantine time. We're in quarantine lockdown here outside of Chicago. So just uh, trying to get through, working on our games, giving us something to go over and have something that passes a little bit of the time because it's a uh, you know it's been a little bit tough to do that. We're on day you know coming up on two weeks almost, and uh, you know basically not going out at all. So. You know, we have to figure out things that we can do. For me, one of those things is I've decided I want to get better at my golf game. So I wanted to show with you how I would use a tool like Live View or Coach Now, that's what I use, and Huddle, V1, all of those. How do I look at a golf swing? And so you can take this and hopefully get better on your own as you're looking at your swings, all right? Before we do that, make sure you click that subscribe button if you're not already. We're gonna have some drills, things like that, that you can do, especially if you have a home indoor simulator. We will go over those, and without further ado, let's head over to the TV monitor. Let's look at some golf swings. All right, everybody, so we're here. We're at the Swing Lab. Let's take a look at this swing. A little bit about this player before we get into it. He is a pretty good player. I think right now he's at about a six handicap. At one point, you know, back in the day, I know this player finished top 20 in their high school state tournament. Very easily could shoot 70s, low 70s, uh, and very rarely would go much higher than that. Now, not playing as much, so that's gone up a little bit, but still a very good player, can get the ball around. He's got a great short game, but uh, what we're looking at is struggling with a little bit of a shot that's drifting to the right, and it's very high, so he's losing some yards, and just overall inconsistency of that direction because he's battling the right sometimes we'll see it go left so let's take a look at what we got so when we look at this swing I'm gonna take a look at the right side first we've got two videos the right side video is actually a full swing full speed right and so one thing about when you're doing videos for your swing I think you should always take it in full speed that is a great option if people are sending them in for online lessons I'd rather see it unless it's really low lighting and we need those extra frames um, I'd rather see the swing in full speed I, I'll sacrifice not seeing the club for a swing or two you'll see them even when we go slow-mo like it gets a little blurry anyway so you I'll sacrifice those frames to be able to see this, the flow of the swing and how everything's going. So I always like seeing it in full speed and then slowing it down a little bit from there. But let's look at that face on view. So this player, let's just play that swing through. You can see pretty good. Video's not so bad as well. You can see they're moving the camera a little bit. Look back at our video on how to film your swing if you wanna see what we're looking for, but not a bad, bad view here. A couple things I'm gonna look at as we're going through and looking at a swing, I'm gonna just pay attention to a couple of things from this angle. One, I'm gonna get one on the head, I'm gonna get one on the right, the trail hip, one on the lead hip. What we're looking for there is just some ways to see, all right, hey, is this player moving a little bit? Um, the other thing I like to draw and just get a feel for is where is the ball in relation to his head? So you can see his head pretty stacked over the ball. Maybe I'd like to see that a little bit behind as well, but we'll see how his head moves in relation to what's going on, all right? So let's go ahead, let's start playing it through. So we can see, again, camera moves a little, but what we're gonna see is on the right side of his body, so the left as we're looking at it, you're gonna see especially his knee and his body, if the camera doesn't move, you would see him probably move well into that green line, but because we see the camera move and we still can tell that he's moving towards the green line, we can definitely see there's a little bit of sway going on into that back side, okay? Now, We'll notice it a lot on the way through. As he's going to hit that ball, again, you're gonna see his body move really far left into that lead side. You can see his head is really drifting forward. Again, camera moves a little bit, but we do have a sense that this player probably drifts too far towards the target, and he's not pivoting enough because of that. When you're drifting too far into the target, 
you're gonna get really over the top of the ball. You're gonna get what we call very steep. You're gonna have to hit the ball really, really perfect to make good contact. A lot of times too, you're gonna see the face really start to open up. That almost like you're trying to use bounce on an iron shot. You'll see that, but you're really gonna just struggle to keep the face stable doing that. You're gonna have to really do some twisting as you go through the ball. So we, I expect to see, especially when we go to the down the line view, I expect to see a lot of club face twisting. Now, let's go back into it. Pretty good. I mean, good finish. You can see a little bit off balance there again, showing that, hey, we're struggling to find some balance, find some good balance with a pivot. The other thing we're going to take a look at, let's clear out some of these lines, is as we're going through this swing, I'm going to pay attention to, I like to look at and try to find when the torso stops moving. So I'm going to pick out something on his shirt and I see on the back side of his shirt, there's a logo, okay? So let's see that right about there, okay? And let's take a look. We're gonna get this extra line I just drew out. There we go, let's take a look. So, you know, right about here, we see that logo is gonna be stopping, but the club and his arms are still going. So what do we see from there? That's something I like to pay attention to as well. When is we, When are we seeing the torso stop compared to when are the arms stopping? We call that arm overrun, when his arms are going too far. Why is that a problem? Well, the farther you go, okay, the farther you go without your body moving, it gets harder and harder to keep your wrist flexed or even just straight. You're gonna see that it likes to start extending. I challenge you at home to try to go as far back as you can and then flex it. I mean, it's just awkward to do and you try to do that at a high speed with some weight on the club. You know, going to this extended position actually helps you support the club. So the problem with that is it's opening the face. You know, so I'm expecting to see an open face. So based on what we've talked about, all right, he loses the ball to the right. I expect to see open face because that's where the ball, that's how the ball goes to the right. Now I'm really expecting to see it when we go onto the down the line view. So we can just pick up a couple of cues right off the bat, just looking at that swing right there. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's take it over to the down the line view. And what are the lines I like to get in? Well, first one, I do like to get in a club line. This is not, you know, it used to be called a swing plane line. I don't really look at this for swing plane because you can trace this line with your club all day and you can still hit really bad shots. Uh, I, the real thing about the golf swing when you start looking at it in a 3D world, you actually wouldn't be on this line very much uh, as you go, you, or you wouldn't try to trace it. So like if you were using a live view camera, trying to trace that line isn't exactly what's going on. It's gonna actually probably make you worse before it makes you better. Even though we do see good swings travel close to that line, they're doing something completely different than what you think to make that happen. Just FYI on that. But I like the line because I need some sort of reference point in the swing just to kind of know where we're at as I start playing the swing through. That's pretty much the whole reason I use it. Um, you know, from there, we're gonna see him go back, you know, pretty decent, okay, pretty decent, and go, and we're gonna see it. I mean, that's a pretty good move. You can see from he hits it pretty good here. Ball looks like it starts left, but as we kind of expected, the first thing I notice is the club face way open. Now that could be a grip issue. I like to check a couple of things. A, I want to see how much, if that right forearm is way over the top of the left. It can be a little bit because of the way the grip and your hands set. You do see good players that have that happen, but not very much, it's not as dramatic as this. So the right hand grip might be a little weak, possibly the left hand grip as well, uh, which if we go back to the face on view, we probably see that a little bit, that they're there. It's actually got kind of a really funky overlap on the grip, but from there, let's look at what I would actually start drawing. So the next line I wanna get in on a golf swing is, Where's my spine? Because the golf swing is going to rotate around that spine and getting the club face relative to your spine, that's how we battle things like early extension and keeping the club face stable, and stopping it from flipping is or rotating a ton because we're getting the, the club face square to the circle or the arc of the swing and your spine is the center of all that. So getting to where you can get the club face square to that really helps. So I wanna have that line in and I'm gonna check 
at a couple key points. So right at this point in the swing, I'm going to check where the face is. And you can see that face is wide open. The club face is pointing up towards his head. That is pretty open at that point. That's a very open club face. And we'll continue to the top. And you can see he does actually have the club, his left wrist flat at this point. I would actually at this point love to see his backswing stop. But you can also see there's the angle of the face. There's his lead arm, lead forearm. Let's get up there a little bit more. You can see he is open to it. When we see the club face more up and down than your lead arm, then that's going to be what we get. And then we'll continue back down. Let's get our line back in for the face. So two points we've checked, still open. We have got it coming back down. Here's the club face again. He is still open, tracking into the golf ball. So we very much expect to see some flipping and we will see that. You can see at this point in the swing, notice how his right arm is really crossing over at this point. He's working really hard to get that face square. And you know, he's got a very good swing. Again, if we kind of look at our original line, if we go to the original line, oh, let's get our straight line. We look at our original line, again, just to give us a shape point of the swing, I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful where his path isn't gonna be very in to out. He would need to actually do some things that are detrimental with where the face is to make that swing kind of work a little better. But what do we get from there? We get open face, we've got to get it square. So what do we get? We're gonna start getting some squaring action by adding loft. If you have an adjustable driver, a lot of times when you're closing the face or putting on that draw setting, usually it means they're gonna add loft. Something to think about too. That's how they get it. The face kind of twists like this to add, to kind of make it loft and you know, all that stuff. So that's something we will work on with them as we go. So those are kind of, that's kind of where I go with the swing. I, I always like to check the face. Now we can do a little check of, all right, how's our early extension? You can see this player does a decent job of it. Again, a little camera movement from the video I sent in, but it is a pretty decent job at not early extending, but he's still losing that ball to the right. So he's a good enough player to know that he shouldn't early extend. He needs that space to hit the ball solid, but because the face is so open, he is going to lose the ball right a lot. So what would we need to do? One, we need to check grip. Grip is how, how his hands are on the club. That has a huge impact on club face. Probably need to strengthen it up on both sides, his left and right hand. We look at that and then we would be working on takeaway. A lot of you know quarter takeaway swings, taking it back, feeling like only taking a half back swing for him. That would feel like a half back swing, but I bet you it would be a full looking swing and making sure that wrist stays bowed. If he can do those things, he'd really be in good shape that's going to help him really get that golf club in a good position de-loft it a little bit getting the ball to flight down and also getting the face shut without having to add that loft so that's how i would analyze this swing hopefully that helps you as you're looking through you can see i look at it more from what are we doing in action? I don't like a lot of static lines right off the bat. We can check some of that, but my main concern is where are we at? There's certain dynamic positions as we're moving the club. I want to see how that relates to some of the kind of things that we want geometry wise in a golf swing that make it consistent. So, all right, so that's looking through a golf swing. Hopefully this kind of gives you an insight into my mind as I've done this, you know, thousands and thousands of times, helping people not only in person, but online looking at their swing. Hopefully, if you have questions, please post below. But if you're not a subscriber already, make sure you click that subscribe button. We're gonna be going over 4D motion, the 3D motion sensors I have, where we talk about some of the things that I see and how we can translate this to video. Why on video are we able to pick some of this stuff out? Well, it really comes from the 3D research we do away from working with students. That really does help with that. So. Don't miss out on that if you're really interested in the golf swing. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. So we'll see you in the next video. As always, thank you for watching and everybody stay safe, stay healthy out there. Really wishing for the best for everybody. And we will be through this soon, back on the course, ready to rock and roll, hopefully very soon.
Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.